Hi there. This is the grand opus video on how to make homemade apple cider vinegar. This video will not only share with you how to make premium apple cider vinegar, but also provide clear step-by-step -step instructions. No special equipment is needed, just the willingness to try. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's go. In just a moment, we'll begin the step-by-step -step instructions for making the vinegar. But first, here are some important notes. First, I want to point out that there is a distinction between apples and apple cider. Stick with me. Today, we will be making our vinegar from apple pieces and not from apple juice. So technically, we're making apple vinegar and not apple cider vinegar. I just wanted to identify that particular wordage since I know it's important to some of you out there. If you want to make your own vinegar from apple cider rather than apple pieces, the step-by-step -step instructions are nearly identical. So watch these instructions all the way through. Afterwards, see the facts section for the couple of differences between the two. Secondly, vinegar is a live culture fermentation, specifically an acetic fermentation. Vinegar making requires two distinct phases of fermentation for the complete water to vinegar transformation. In phase one, the natural yeasts in the air and on the apples will convert the apple sugars into alcohol. Then as the yeast begins to die out due to having consumed the available sugars, phase two will begin. This is where the bacteria called acetobacter, hence acetic fermentation, will take over. They will consume the alcohol that the yeast produced in phase one and convert it into acetic acid as a byproduct. Acetic acid is the primary constituent of vinegar and is what acidifies the vinegar, gives the sour taste, and generates flavors. By the time the finished vinegar product is ready, there will be no more alcohol or sugar present, leaving behind only healthy, probiotic-rich raw apple vinegar if you made it from apple pieces or apple cider vinegar if you made it from juiced apples. Lastly, throughout this video, you will see this facts badge. When it appears, I may say something, I may not. However, whenever you see it, it means I've dedicated a specific category in the facts section where I will address details I didn't cover in the step-by-step -step instructions. So keep an eye out for it. Since this is going to be a wild fermentation, not a cultured one, no mother or starter culture will be needed. Okay, let's make some vinegar. Here's an overview of what we will be needing. Apples, unbleached sugar, non-chlorinated water, and a jar. If you don't have a lot of material to work with, quart jars will be perfect. But if you do have a lot, you can ferment in jars as large as a half gallon and one gallon in size. Step one is the apples. Apple vinegar is so unpicky about the apples you use, which is great. You can use just the flesh of the apple or all the parts, such as the apple skin and the core. This is great if you're making an apple pie, apple sauce, apple butter, or apple cider, since you can use the flesh for those things and the apple scraps for vinegar. If you have concerns about apple seeds, please see the facts section. Also, I've got notes in there about washing the apples and using organic versus conventional. Throw whatever parts of the apple you'll be using into a bowl. This is my hodgepodge bowl of apple chunks, skins, cores, and pulp. Step two is loading the apples into the jar. Wash the jars with hot soapy water. No need to sterilize, hot soapy water is sufficient. Take some handfuls of apple and load it into the jar. No need to pack it down. You can fill the jar, leaving some headspace like so. And this would be considered the max amount of apple to use. The minimum would be half full. I have made vinegar with both the maximum and the minimum amounts, and both produced an excellent vinegar. Step three is to add the sugar. For a quart size jar, use anywhere from two tablespoons of sugar to one quarter cup. Use a granulated cane sugar that is unbleached since some bleaching agents can disrupt fermentation. The glucose in the apple plus the added sugar is food for the microbes to do their fermenting jobs. The sugar will not only help jumpstart the fermentation speed by providing abundant food, but also help it become robust. A robust fermentation will improve the end product flavor. See the facts section for more on adding sugar or no sugar, plus notes on measurements and substitutions. 
Step four is to pour room temperature water over the apples and fill the jar. Give the mixture a stir. I'm using a bamboo chopstick. Any remaining sugar granules will be dissolved by the next day, so no worries if you see it hanging out in there for a little bit, and also don't worry if the apples float up. Step five is to cover it with a breathable top. You can use a coffee filter and secure it with the jar ring or a rubber band, but I found that securing it with a rubber band worked much better at keeping the fruit flies out. In the facts section, I talk more about other breathable lid options as well as why you do not want to use an airlock or airtight lid. I also recommend at this point putting a note or a label on the jar of the starting date. Step six is to place it on the countertop out of direct sunlight. For the next 30 days or so, you wanna keep an eye on it, stirring it every day to every other day. It's important to stir it every one to two days because this is what will prevent mold growth on top, especially if you live in a humid climate. By giving the apple mixture a gentle stir dunk every day, mold is inhibited. Two more reasons why daily stirring is a good idea is one, it keeps you in tune with the health and vitality of the fermentation. And two, it helps continue aerating the mixture. Remember the bacteria responsible for this acetyl fermentation need oxygen. Now, if you don't stir it daily, it will still turn into vinegar, but I have found that the added aeration helps improve the end product flavor. See the facts section where I talk more about mold, including what to do if it does form, and notes on calm yeast, which is another common occurrence with fermentations. I'm gonna give some examples of what to look and smell for. Within the first few days, look for bubbles forming. The bubbles are CO2 gases being released by the yeast as they consume the sugars. By day seven or eight, you should be getting some whiffs of an alcohol smell. This can be a strong smell or a faint one, either is fine. Leading up to days eight to 10, it should be graduating to being very bubbly. Let me zoom in here and have you look closely to see the numerous tiny CO2 bubbles being released. If it doesn't seem super bubbling standing, then the bubbles should flare up right away once you stir it or give the jar a bit of a jiggle. See the facts section on what to do if by 10 it still seems to be flat or weak. You'll notice the bubbles dissipating after week two into week three as phase one tapers out. This time frame could be a little sooner, it could be a little longer. A lot of factors affect fermentation speeds. Here's one of mine near the end of the month. Notice there are no more frothy bubbles. One indication the fermenting phases have completed is that the apples have sunk. However, if they haven't sunk, there's no need for concern. Step seven is to strain out the apples, which will take place around the 30 day mark. The bubbles at this point should be very minimal to flat, and the smell of alcohol is gone, replaced with the smell of sourness or acidity, in other words, a vinegary smell. This can be either strong or faint, either is fine. Just before straining the apples, take a pH reading to ensure you've got a good vinegar pH. I like to use this digital pH reader that I also use with my lacto-fermentations because I prefer the precision reading versus the more general reading of the pH strips. But either pH testing method is fine, your choice. What we wanna look for is a pH reading that is at least below 4.5 and preferably 3.0 to 3.5. These are two different vinegar batches you're seeing here. One has a pH of 3.3 and the other is at a 3.5. Perfect. I'm using a fine mesh nylon strainer to pour off the apples. With wash clean hands, press down to work out the remaining liquid. Then discard the apples. You can compost them or feed them to livestock, whatever. Either rewash the jar it was in to reuse it or get a new one. Pour the vinegar into the jar. See the facts section where I talk more about pH readings, color variances, and cloudiness. Feel free to take a taste test of your apple cider vinegar. You will be so pleasantly surprised of how much more appley and better tasting it is than the store vinegars. Some people at this point will put a regular lid on, place it in the cupboard, and just be done with it. For me, I like to make extra sure that the vinegar is positively done with both phases. So I place the airflow cover back on and continue to let it sit on the countertop for an additional two weeks. 
No stirring or watching is needed like before. I just forget about it for the next couple of weeks. Step eight is storing the vinegar for long term. The vinegar should last for years on the shelf. It does not require refrigeration for storage since the low acid level kills off potential microbes that could be harmful. If you notice the raw apple cider vinegar you buy at the store, it's not refrigerated either. It's on the shelf. Place the vinegar in the pantry or a cupboard where you normally would store any other type of vinegar. Use a regular non-metal lid since metal lids tend to deteriorate over time with vinegar storage. What I like to use are these plastic lids I got off of Amazon. See the facts section where I share more on lid storage options. I'm also going to talk more in the facts section about what a vinegar mother is and what to do with it. Plus, how to tell if the vinegar ever goes bad, what to do if mold forms, and many more details that are good information to know, especially if you're new to vinegar making. Here's a table of contents of the upcoming facts topics. I also provide video chapters of each section that you can find in the video written description. I just felt that this would be a beneficial convenience in case you need to return to the video for a quick reminder or need a question answered. If this is your first time watching, please do watch through the end of this video as to avoid asking questions in the comments section that are already answered here in the video. Wild fermentation versus using a starter culture. A wild fermentation means that the fermentation relies on the yeasts and the bacterias naturally present in the air, food, and soil, and does not require a starter culture to get the fermentation going. Sometimes people want a specific flavor for their vinegar that is derived from a particular yeast or acetobacter strain. In this case, they'll use a designated starter culture that they'll add to their batch. This would no longer be considered a wild fermentation, but a cultured one. It's also possible to add two to four tablespoons of an established batch of vinegar, such as a store-bought raw vinegar, you know, with the mother, or from a batch you've made previously to get things going. There is no right or wrong, I'm just simply explaining the difference. Using apple cider instead of apple pieces. For making apple cider vinegar as a wild fermentation, juice fresh apples. Do not use store-bought juice, frozen or bottled. Pour the juice into a jar and add the sugar. No need to add water like when making the vinegar with apple pieces. The cider will also need to be stirred or shaken daily to avoid mold growth on the surface. When the vinegar is just standing on the countertop, have its airflow cover on. To give it a shake, place a lid on tightly to avoid any leaks, then put the airflow cover back on after shaking. Do not leave the lid on or you will be making a very terrible tasting apple wine vinegar that is so sour and icky. Alternatively, you can use a wooden utensil to stir it up instead of a lid and shaking. Of course, putting the airflow cover back on when you're done. At the end of 30 days, there will not be any apple pieces to strain off, so skip that part and follow the previously given instructions. Types of apples and washing. You can use any apple variety. Personally, I think sweeter apples make for a better flavor, but if a tart, tangy Granny Smith is what you have, go for it. If you're using store-bought apples, organic would be considered better as to avoid the harsh chemicals used on conventional produce. And in my opinion, apples from your own tree are even better. However, there's no rule saying you can't use conventional fruit, so if that's what you have available to you, use it. However, if you're going to use conventional, my recommendation is to peel the apple and discard the skins using the inner part of the apple. This will at least reduce the bulk of the chemical contamination that the skin tends to take on. If using store-bought organic apples, wash with a produce wash, which will help reduce possible waxes and other things they may have been put on to the apple. Non-sprayed and non-waxed homegrown apples can be simply rinsed with water or not rinsed at all. It's your choice. Apple seeds. Some fruits and nuts contain the type of organic cyanide when metabolized. In order for the cyanide to be released from the seeds, the seeds must be crushed, chewed, or otherwise ground up. Apple seeds have a hard, durable shell that seals the potentially toxic substance inside the seed. This allows them to pass intact through the digestive system. 
The seeds aren't even affected by digestive enzymes. So if swallowed whole, the cyanide compound is inside the seed, safely contained thanks to its extra durable protective coating. To put some numbers on this, apple seeds have the potential to release 0.6 milligrams of cyanide per gram when ground up or intensely chewed. This means that a person would have to chew and swallow 83 to 500 apple seeds in one sitting in order to develop acute cyanide poisoning. So consider yourself safe. Sugar. When it comes to adding sugar to the jar, this is one of those things that can just be all over the place. Some people will say sugar isn't needed, the fruit has enough. True, I experimented with no sugar vinegar ferments and compared them to the ones that did have added sugar. Both turned into vinegar, but the added sugar ones had a more progressive and hearty phase one alcohol fermentation, which in the end resulted in a better tasting vinegar. So it is my recommendation to add sugar. Now let's talk about sugar substitutions. The microbes need glucose for food in order to do what they need to do. Therefore, you cannot use stevia because there's actually no glucose in stevia. Additionally, I found that coconut and date sugar don't work very well either, so I also do not recommend those. Some people say that you cannot use honey and others say that you can, which makes me also curious about using maple syrup. But I am soon gonna experiment so I can have a definite answer to share with you on the success, the speed, pH, and flavor. Once I have the results, I'll make note of it in the written description section of this video. Water. Use non-chlorinated water with any type of fermentation, including vinegar making. Chlorine is a non-discriminatory disinfectant, meaning it kills all bacteria, the good and the bad. We need the good bacteria alive and thriving in order to make vinegar. Other types of water you can use are filtered, like with a Brita or under sink filter, reverse osmosis, distilled, rain, spring, well, or bottled. Pretty much the rule of thumb is you can use any water that isn't chlorinated. Lids. Besides using a coffee filter as an airflow cover, you could also use a napkin, paper towel, or linen cloth. Avoid using a cheesecloth since it's so porous and the fruit flies will just have a heyday. Now, this is very important. Mold growth needs oxygen in order to grow, so you may be tempted to use an airlock lid with the thought of if there's no air inside the jar, no mold will grow. However, remember aceto fermentation is an aerobic fermentation, meaning it needs oxygen. If you use an airlock lid, true, no mold will develop. But instead of making vinegar, you're going to make a very sour, terrible tasting apple wine instead. I experimented using a variety of airlock and airtight lids to see for myself and indeed every single one turned out to be an awful tasting sour wine. However, the acetobacter only need oxygen during the fermentation phases when it's converting the alcohol from the yeasts into acetic acid. Once the vinegar process has completely run its course, a regular lid screwed on airtight for storage or a cork will be just fine. The acetobacter will still be alive, but dormant until refreshed, meaning until you add some as a starter to a new batch. What to do if mold and calm yeast form. If by chance you forget about it for a week or longer, hence not stirring it often and mold develops, have no worries. The mold will only be on top where the oxygen is and not in the vinegar itself. There's no oxygen in the liquid of the vinegar and the low pH of the vinegar makes it impossible for mold to grow in the vinegar as opposed to just the top surface. This means that the mold can be removed and the vinegar is not a loss. It's quite easy to remove, watch my demonstration. This is mold that grew on the surface of an apple cider vinegar I made. Now, simply remove the mold just by reaching in like this. It's almost like a skin atop the surface, making it really easy to pull it off in one sweep. Then before pouring off the vinegar, take a paper towel and wipe the inside of the jar. I'm not worried about the stuff that's dried onto the sides, just the moist stuff that could perhaps hitch a ride into the new jar I'll be pouring the vinegar into. 
Do an initial strain through a fine mesh sieve next to catch any fine mold particles that were small enough to go through the sieve pour the vinegar slowly through a coffee filter like this. When it clogs up, ring the filter. Repeat until all the vinegar has been strained. Then place whichever airflow cover back on the jar that you are using with a rubber band to secure it. And just an FYI, even if a few mold particles remained in the vinegar, for instance, if you chose not to strain it, the acidic pH would kill it off very quickly and the vinegar would still be okay to use. Calm yeast is different from mold. Calm yeast is naturally present in the air and it's harmless. It forms a powdery whitish layer. You can see it's different from mold because it's not fuzzy, multicolored, nor three-dimensional. Look when I touch it. It's very different from mold and if it were a vinegar mother forming, it would feel slimy or gelatinous, which is not the case with this example. You can choose to leave the calm yeast or scrape it off. Variances. Since vinegar is a natural product reliant on foods, microorganisms, variances in color, taste, and cloudiness are normal and to be expected. Color can vary based on the type of apple used, skins or no skins, etc. Or if a starter culture was added, which can sometimes darken the color of the vinegar. Cloudiness is a good sign of a healthy fermentation of the good bacteria, the acetobacter. And the sediment at the bottom is the formation of the mother, which I cover in another category here in the facts section. Fermentation time. Since fermentation is reliant on microorganisms, the available glucose in the food, plus are responsive to the environment, such as temperature and humidity, Fermentation times can vary. The best temps for fermenting are going to be above 60 degrees and below 80 degrees. Warmer temps will speed things up, cooler temps will slow things down. No harm in either, just something to be aware of. Due to all these variables, some vinegars will be complete and ready in 30 days, others 40, 50, or even 60 days. Not many bubbles or none. If it's completely flat by day four, no bubbles at all, not even a little, try adding two more tablespoons of sugar plus a starter culture from a store-bought raw apple cider vinegar with the mother, assuming you don't have any other homemade vinegars. If that does nothing, then something's up with the fermentation. Troubleshooting questions to consider are, did the apples have some kind of processing that may have killed off the natural organisms? What kind of water was used? Was the sugar bleached? What was the temperature of the environment? And so on. In a different scenario where the bubbles are lightly forming, but by days eight to 10 are still not hearty, try adding one to two tablespoons more of the sugar to give the fermentation a greater jump start. If that doesn't super activate things, then just allow it to be a slow ferment and see how the vinegar turns out. If by day 30 or 45, its pH is 4.0 to 4.5, that's a pretty weak vinegar. So you'll wanna use it within a couple months or keep it in the fridge for longer storage. What is a mother and what to do with it? The mother is the name given to the acetobacter that form a gelatinous mass on or in the vinegar. It can also take the form of sediment at the bottom of the jar or be a wispy-like structure in the vinegar that looks like a little jellyfish or spider web. The mother can make the vinegar cloudy as well. Within the first month or two of making a new vinegar, the gelatinous mother may or may not form. Sometimes it can take months, sometimes it's just quick in a matter of weeks. It will first appear as an opaque slimy film and over time thicken. The older and more established it is, the larger and thicker it will become. But have no worries, the mother is in the new vinegar, even if it's not a gelatinous mass and you can't really see it. The brownish sludge and or cloudiness is evidence of the mother's presence. If the mother grows quickly within the first few weeks, once it becomes thick and covers the apples completely, you don't need to stir it anymore. But if it hasn't formed yet, keep stirring. What to do with it? You can remove a well-established vinegar mother and use it to make another batch of vinegar. With freshly washed hands, reach in and remove the mother.
Place it in a bowl with a bit of vinegar while you prep the next batch. Add the new apple pieces to the new clean jar and some sugar because it's in my opinion that sugar makes a better tasting end product vinegar for the same reasons I gave earlier in this video, so I recommend it. But some people say you don't need to. You decide for yourself. Then place the mother on top of the mixture as well as the bit of vinegar that it was sitting in. Then let it sit for a month or so. No need to stir it with the mother on top since the mother is protecting the mixture surface from mold formation. Follow all the other previously given instructions. Since the mother is being used as the starter, the more established of a mother you use, such as its size and its health, will speed up the process of the vinegar formation. You can do this in any glass or ceramic vessel, large to small. Sometimes the mother sinks and that's okay. Then leave it for a few weeks, two months, whenever you get back to it. However, if you did use fresh fruit, you'll wanna remove the mother first, then strain the fruit out, and then put the mother back on to the vinegar liquid. You'll know the vinegar is ready when you taste test it and it's turned into a vinegar flavor that you like. Once it's to your liking, pour off the vinegar into other smaller jars for storage for yourself or as gifts to others. Using vessels with a spigot is really handy if you want to just pour off the vinegar anytime you want rather than storing it in jars in the cupboard. For mother storage, leave it in the vessel with some remaining vinegar to cover it or if you're at all vinegared out, toss the mother or give it to your chickens. Growing another one down the road is always an option. How to use apple cider vinegar. Your homemade apple vinegar or apple cider vinegar is so healthy and delicious it can replace your store-bought vinegar in most cases. Because of its wonderful flavor, as you will soon find out for yourself, it's a great vinegar to use in salad dressings, sauces, and cooking. However, do not use it for canning. Canning requires a specific acidity that the store-bought standardized vinegars can provide. Homemade vinegars are challenging to standardize to specific acidities, for example, 4%, 5%, 7%, etc. So for canning, stick with store vinegars that have the verified correct acidity needed for safe canning. But for your other cooking recipes that don't need verified acidity levels, it's wonderful. If you make refrigerator pickles, your homemade vinegar is great for that. If you like to add vinegar to your water or take a teaspoon straight daily for health purposes, your homemade vinegar will be perfect for those uses as well. Home remedies that utilize ACV, you can use your homemade vinegar instead of store-bought. You can make a cleaning solution with it and put it in a spray bottle. I'm sure YouTube has tons of videos on cleaning recipes using ACV and other uses as well. How to know if your vinegar has gone bad. There's a couple things that will indicate if your vinegar has gone bad. First and foremost is the pH. Did it go above 4.5 and is mold growing on the top? When your vinegar is a strong, hearty vinegar that is healthy, once it's in storage, mold will not grow on the top. It's just too acidic. But if the fermentation died off and the pH raised up, then mold will grow. Plus, when you smell it, does it smell like water instead of like vinegar? If any of these things are the situation, just toss it. Are all fermentations the same? Not all fermentations are the same. For example, the fermentation used for vinegar making called acetyl fermentation is very different from the fermentation used for vegetables, which is called lacto-fermentation. There are other types of fermentations beyond those as well. Watch my video on the five types of fermentations that explains the further differences between lacto, acido, alcohol, mold, and symbiotic fermentations. I consider this important information to know if you're getting into fermenting, so I really hope that you watch that video. I'll provide a link in the written description below, or you can click right here. And if you've made it to the end of this mega video, congrats. You are a diehard and I love you for it because I'm a diehard too. We have found each other. Subscribe if you want to see more videos on fermentation and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.